Hello, we are continuing with chapter three of Proverbs. As we enter chapter three, we get a little bit more of the parable structure, a little bit more of the aphorisms. So we will start at verse one and uh, read verse one and two. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. We know that the world is not a just and righteous place and that the rain falls on both the just and on the unjust. And God sometimes gives blessings to Christians and sometimes gives blessings to non-Christians. But we also know as a general first principle, if you listen to those things that are wise, that the older generations tell you are wise, that generally you prosper. Um, if you're... People teach you don't touch fire, and you don't touch fire, then you won't get burned. So, um, and if they teach you work hard, and you work hard, then generally you will have success in your business. So, um, this is this is very true. So, don't forget the teachings, but keep those commandments in your heart, and uh, generally you will prosper. Three. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and, and a good name in the sight of God and man. So God is love. Um, if we keep God here, and really it's God who keeps himself here, but from our perspective, if we keep God here, if we keep our love of God here, it speaks about binding it upon your neck and you know, here, right there, um, so that it never leaves, then this is going to have a good result. People will naturally see our acts of love and the way we treat them well, as God would have them be treated, uh, similarly to how Christ treated people well. And uh, then, then there's favor with people. You're a good neighbor. You're a good husband. You're a good father. You're a good worker. You're a good boss. Um, as we keep God near, it changes how we live, and uh, it earns favor um, and makes us good in the sight of God and man. Five, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I'm going to pause there for a moment. Our understanding is flawed. We can see this with this virus where we have a thousand different people, very wise people, giving us all sorts of different ideas and information. Um, our understanding is flawed. We do the best we can with that. But God's understanding, it doesn't change, and it's always true. It always is right. If we trust in God's understanding, and we do what God says is right, uh, first of all, that's universal truth. And second of all, God is going to make sure that his plans occur. So we're not really depending on ourselves or even on our understanding. We're depending on God and his promises and his activity. So trust in God, not on ourself. Six, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Things are easier when we have God with us. Doesn't mean that there aren't difficult things. Uh, if someone gets cancer, the death of a loved one, um, injury to a child. These are these are difficult things, um, and there's God says that there, we're going to have those difficult things, and we're going to have these in our paths. But He also says He's going to make our paths straight. Um, we have honest, reliable, uh, God-given way of living, and so uh, when we come to the end of life and we're making those difficult decisions, we also have a straight path. We know where that person's going to end. We know what what is the goal here. Um, the goal is that they die with their Savior. They go to the blessed peace, uh, that we don't have strife and turmoil that comes out of their death, um, that we have the comfort and hope of the future, that we mourn in the presence and and share with one another and, and help each other out. So our path is straight. 
when I go and I, I speak to a couple and they're fighting, I have a straight path to follow. I don't always have the answers, but I know what I'm trying to do. I am trying to have them be forgiven by God, forgive each other, seek to serve one another, and then stay married, stay together in a blessed union that God has given. And so there's a straight path there. Now, I don't always know the right answer, and the world is a confused and crooked place, and sin causes confusion and, and uh, those sorts of things. But God makes our path straight when we trust in him, when we put our hands and our lives in his hands, and then we follow in the way that he teaches. Seven, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. So when uh, the Satan came to Eve and he basically said, um, God lied. And if you eat of this fruit, you will be a God. You will be like God. And then you'll understand things and you'll know things. And so we've sought that ever since. We've sought to be the center of our universe and our own gods. Well, Solomon says, eh, that's not what you want. Um, being wise in your own eyes, looking great to yourself, this self-pride, uh, this hubris, this leads to disaster. But if we fear the Lord, in other words, if we seek his knowledge and his love and shun evil, we seek what's good, um, generally speaking, that produces health and long life, as we've been saying. Um, so, um, nourishment to your bones, the reason it says bones, that's the, the core of you, the center of you, everything about you. If the bones are healthy, then everything's healthy. Nine, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then I'm going to go to the then in a moment. So it's a gift from God. And as such, we should thank him for it, and we should use it in a way which pleases God. That does sometimes include our own joys and, and uh, enjoyments, but that also includes the vocation we've been given to watch over our family, our work, um, to uh, repair the things that he has given us and, and upkeep our property. And that includes looking out for others as well. Uh, Jesus said, who's your neighbor? And then he talks about helping out your neighbor, right? Like the good Samaritan did. So all of those are good, please, God-pleasing uses for wealth. He says with the first fruits, that means we don't worry about the future, right? You honor God with what he's given you now. The future will handle and take care of itself. This doesn't mean, you know, this doesn't mean you can't have life insurance or such things, Um Early in the church, people in our, our synodical body, people did not have life insurance. They said, no, that's not trusting God. Um, now, I, I think that's a rational and a good use of wisdom. Um, we don't control the future, but God has given us our resources now, and then we plan to have a good future, knowing that God is going to give us our resources. At some point, we are going to die. And so we have life insurance as part of that plan for a good future, but not to stymie death, not to stop the possibility of bad things, um, but to be wise in our stewardship. So that's, I think, where that applies. But if we do these things, it says in 10, then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. Now, this isn't a prosperity gospel message. As I said, the rain falls on the just and on the unjust. Um, and sin causes evil things sometimes to happen. So you look at Job, Job, who was highly blessed and then was cursed, right? Lost everything. And then he was blessed again. Uh, we're looking at this wrong if we're thinking, I do X and, and Y will occur, right? Uh, because Y is controlled by God, right? What occurs is at God's, according to God's plan and God's design. And God does at times allow sin for various reasons, uh, Jesus says, so that his glory might be shown, so that we can grow. He allows these things to happen. 
Um, but the, the blessing here, what we should be seeing here, what Solomon is saying, is when you trust in God and you put your goods to the use to which God has designed, God will take care of tomorrow. God's going to take care of the future and the good things. And often, um, unto those who do well with little, he gives much. Uh, so you do well with what he gives you and trust him to give you much. And truthfully, though it's not always in um, earthly goods, his abundance always overflows to us. His blessings of life and salvation, forgiveness, sometimes earthly goods, sometimes children, uh, knowledge, um, joys. And in the end, obviously, uh, the cup overflows as we go to heaven and we are his children and we live under him and with him in his kingdom forever. Okay, we're going to pause there because we're at about 11 minutes and that's about when the file gets too long.